Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond Loss, Loving Life with Karen Chaston. I'm Karen Chaston and it is so great to have you here today. So let me get up the comments so I can see who's here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, oh, excuse me, my voice, what's going on? So today it is the 10th of May, the day after Mother's Day in Australia, and it got me thinking about loss and love and the fact that, you know, there are over 40 different loss events that can come into all of our lives. And I thought it'd be really great today is to start to talk about love. You know, uh, let me know where you're from. Uh, great to have you all here. And of course, hi Shazza, nice to see you here. Um, so today after day after is Mother's Day, like you know, Mother's Day can bring up a whole lot of emotions. Sometimes we don't receive the love and the direction from our mother or from our parents that we feel that we need, but it's really important for us to, to realize that in any given moment, we all do that the best that we can. We have these, um, you know, ideal ways of doing things and with the information that we know at that time, we, you know, do the best that we can. And at times it's not good enough. It's not the best that the other person requires and that's, you know, can make it really, really hard on the other person. So yesterday... I received from my daughter-in-law, like I received a fair a, a present from all of them, but I also received from my daughter-in-law a special little card that she um, gave to me thanking me for being a great mother-in-law and a great grandmother. I'm not a great grandmother, but a um, grandmother who is great. <laughs> Let's put that right. I'm not that old. Um, so, and it's and it really did get me thinking. Hi, Diane. Nice to see you here. And it really got me thinking is, you know, I consciously do most things in my life now. I have an intention for the day that I set each morning. I, you know, do things that I'm aware of. I set intentions before I more or less do anything throughout the day. And I have purposely um, created little rituals that will ensure that I am connecting with people. And that's obviously why I am beyond lost expert, because I like to help people to have awareness about themselves. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Kerry. Great to see you both here. Um, and that's what I want to talk about today is, are you setting intentions and are you aware of who you are in any given moment? Now, we live in a world of density. We live in um, a world where we could continually be angry, we could continually be in fear, have a lack mindset, or we can look at the other duality of all of that and we can be in love, we can be in abundance, we can be in an awareness. And that's what I have, have chosen. I've chosen to be very positive in my life. And I have chosen to put relationships um, as a high priority. And I didn't do that when I was younger. I'm the first one to tell you that I put my career ahead of relationships and my relationships weren't always ideal. But as I have got more and more into becoming a beyond less loss expert, I have realised that that's what life's about. It, life is about our relationships and we have many different relationships in our lives. We um, obviously have our family and our loved ones. We have um, our colleagues, our work relationships. We have our society relationships, our neighbours, um, people who we meet through the different activities that we do in society. It could be through, you know, a kid's a uh, football group or it could be through any sort of different activity that we do in our life that we have different people come into our lives and we can connect with them and some that we will have just moment um, momentarily connections or some we will have for the rest of our lives. And Mother's Day, which was yesterday in Australia, really does bring up the fact of what are our relationships like? 
you know, could I have a better relationship with my mother or my daughter-in-law or my grandchild or whoever? Because even if you are not physically a mother, you do probably do, you know, in somewhere in your life, there could be a figure that you are mothering. You know, I always think of Oprah. Now, Oprah's the first one to tell you that she had a child when she was like 13, 14, 15, around that age, early teens, um, who died at birth. And she, the, you know, she was raped and, um, but she had the child full term. And then, of course, it, it didn't live. But she said, I am still a mother. She has created girl schools in Africa and she still has those tendencies of the way she looks after the people who work with her, the way that she looks after so many other people in the world. So even though you may not physically be a mother or a parent, if, if there's any guys on board today, it's really important for us to see how are we mothering in our lives. So that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. Um, are you being conscious in all that you do? Are you looking at ways that you can do things better? because that's what life's about, is looking at where we're at and looking at where we want to be and hopefully thinking that it's better down there than where we are now. But what are the action steps that I need to take to close that gap continually um, so that we can ensure that we are always creating that better everyday life, that better relationship, not only with ourselves, but with everyone else. So, hi, Kelly. I am doing great. Thank you. I hope you are as well. Hi, Maria. Kelly. Um, yeah. Hi. How are you doing? Hope you are good. Yes, I am. Thank you. So, what do you reckon? Is this what we want to talk about today or is there other, any other question that you may have that you'd like to talk to uh, about today? Hi, Christine, because I'm, I'm just open to anything. I chose... Um, I've got here my little uh, guided cards, which I love to do. Now, I don't do card readings, so don't get confused that I do card readings. Thanks, uh, Kerry, for interacting. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Christine. Um, right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a card from here today because it's a group card. I've drawn one for myself today, but I want to draw a group card and... I really do feel that sometimes we make like life a lot harder than it needs to be. So let's see what this beautiful card, which is Spiritual Guidance Cards by Marcia Quinton, um, which I just love to share. Okay, I'm going to pick the top one. Okay, so what is this one? Oh, it's a crystal ball. How appropriate is our crystal ball? Okay, this is what it's saying. Then this is for everyone who is either watching it live or watching it later. Now, this is card number 35, which adds to eight. So eight is all about abundance. So this is abundance. Now, abundance is not always just money, okay? Abundance could be a whole lot of love in your life, a whole lot of joy in your life, fulfillment. It could be a whole lot of anything that you desire, okay? And money is okay too. If it's the money that you desire, it's okay. But just remember, money is not going to bring you all that happiness. And let's face it, we all know that, you know, Bill and Melinda Gates have decided to separate and they have all the money in the world, more than that they could ever possibly need. They've been giving it away for years. So money doesn't guarantee happiness. Just remember that as we go through this journey. So here it is, crystal ball. I'm going to read it to you. You are touched by the vibrant power of the crystal, crystal orb, okay? The power of the crystal ball has opened up into your life today. This puts you in touch with the world of crystals and the ability to utilise this orb to view the path clearly. This powerful gift has awakened within you, you in your life today to touch the birth of Mother Earth through the divine liquid light of crystals. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but I normally always have a crystal in my hand every time I go live because I realise that I had a lot of problems, energetic problems or, you know, stability with the internet or whatever. But once I started 
carrying these um, crystals, I started to really realize that everything went smoothly. I was divinely guided. Whatever came out, came out was always for the best for me and for all that was listening. So crystals are really important in your life. So do you have crystals in your life? Okay, crystals are as old as the earth. They record and contain the mysteries of life. The sages have touched you with this orb so you may see your way forward. Use this ability to see clearly throughout your life. Gaze into the gentle vibration of the orb and feel the powerful gift within its being. It's a magical energy from the earth bringing its ageless wisdom to help all sentiment beings flourish. So that's your guidance for today. So if you have a crystal or not. So let's get into what we're going to talk about. Okay, great, Kelly. Thank you. Um, hi, Maria. Hi, Maria from Sydney. I'm on the Gold Coast. Okay, Christine, I find um, I overmother in areas I lacked as a child. Do you have any tips to help balance that out? Fabulous question, Christine. Thank you. Let's go into that first. Okay. And it is funny, isn't it, that we always give what we lacked in ourselves. So, Christine, why do you feel you are over-mothering in those areas? And what is it inside of you that requires healing? Because I find, right, that when you heal within yourself, whatever you felt you lacked in the past or lacking in the present, you can then move forward knowing that, you are, you know, in joy and fulfillment. And the fact that you're giving more to others in those areas and you're aware that you're over-mothering, it sends to me that you still require to heal that inner child within yourself. And so often we forget about our inner child, that young person who sometimes has been waiting for us for a long time to come and actually heal those things that we we created as a child. Um, I, I can remember like for a long time, and I write about this in my book, the book that I am just editing at the moment, and in July I'm going to part pitch to um, the Australian Society of Authors. Three times a year, if you have a manuscript, you can pitch to their so let me talk about this little experience of, of me as a child. So I am one of seven children and there's six girls and then five years after the girls, the youngest girl, my baby brother was born. And yes, my brother is the golden child, as you can imagine. But when there was just the six of us, we lived in a two-bedroom house in Sydney and um, my younger sister, she, I'm the third eldest, my younger sister lived, in, um, was in the cot in my parents' room and the other five girls were in the other room, two double bunks and a single bed. My two older sisters went to school and, and in our backyard we had like a double block and my father was setting up his business. This was like in 19, early 60s, okay. So I used to be his helper because the three little ones would be inside with mum and I'd be outside with dad and my two older sisters would be at work. And then one day I made a mistake because he was, you know, he was setting up a tractor repairs business and I'd hand him his spanner and I'd hand him that and I'd do all this different stuff. And then he got angry at me one day and the, what seemed like the next day, he sent me away. I wasn't allowed to go in the backyard every day with him. I was sent away each day and that was it. My father and I never, ever had the same relationship after that. I was in my 50s when I did a healing, an inner child healing, and this greatest awareness came to me and it was really, really sad because my dad at that time had passed on. He wasn't still in this realm for me to be able to go and apologise to him. But what came to me was he didn't send me away. He sent me to school. But my child mind's um, awareness of what happened, in my mind, I made a mistake, he got angry, he sent me away. 
okay? And I don't know what the time frame is in, in those three things occurring, but that's what happens. So that's what I'd like to say, Christine, is maybe it's your inner child that requires healing for what you lacked when you were a younger child. And that's why you're overcompensating and overmothering, and these are your words, not mine, um, that you are doing. So do the inner child work. Now, I can send you some inner child uh, references place to go to, but one of the one is the greatest ones is have you ever heard of Radical Forgiveness? I highly recommend the book Radical Forgiveness by Colin Tipping to anyone. It is a great book to heal a lot of not only your inner child stuff but anything in your life. But what I also would like to recommend, if you go to radicalforgiveness.com, I think is the website, but it's just type in Radical Forgiveness. They have some healings in there and they have an inner child, um, it's an inner child meditation that you can do which will really greatly assist you in healing. Now, obviously, I don't get anything from recommending this and I have no problem with that. I just want people to realise I'm not recommending it because I'm an affiliate or anything like that. But go to the Radical Forgiveness site, have a look at the downloads, their meditations, there is an inner child meditation because I actually have it and I play it every now and then when I feel things come up and it's a really a great meditation because it does take you back to help you to heal things. I hope that assists you. Um, and, you know, even though we think we lacked things as an inner child, that's another thing about radical forgiveness, it assists you to realise that nothing was done to you, it was done for for you. So when we think that we lacked things, maybe it was the fact that that then assisted you to make sure that it didn't, um, there wasn't lack in that regards for you with other people. And you said you overmother in areas. Do the other people who you're overmothering, your words again, feel that you're overmothering or they actually grateful that you are that way sometimes we just feel it and we're not really sure something for you to contemplate I highly recommend that and I can see you've said thank you so that's great okay Lisa I'm holding a crystal also it's a Lemurian Dreamtime Smoky Quartz I would like to know my soul's mission please okay Lisa I don't do that um I am not that I am not a psychic, like we're all psychic, but I am I am not a medium. I do not do things like that. I assist people to move beyond loss and create their better everyday life. Okay? That's what I do. That's what I talk about. I have programs that assist people to find out who they are. But what I'd like to ask you is why do you think I would know what your soul's mission is? you know what your soul's mission is. Have you taken the time to deep dive into yourself? Because you are the master you are seeking. No one can tell you what is right or wrong for you the way you can tell yourself what is right or wrong for you. And there's a program that I have, which is a 45-day revitalization your life program, Lisa, that I highly recommend that you do. Here is the link. I'm going to enter the link right now. Here is the link that you can actually start to deep dive into you and then you will find the answers to what your soul's mission is. Now, do you realise, right, your soul's mission may be for you to be the best person that you are, to be the best mother that you are. To, it doesn't mean that your soul's mission is this big, great, gigantic thing, okay? It may be just to be that you being the best version of yourself is your soul's mission, to work through all of the trials and the tribulations that has come into your life, okay? Sometimes we get 
we see that you know people are up on stage and they're saying this is my soul's purpose this is what i'm here to do and this is what i'm here all this sort of stuff and it's probably true but then people who don't have this many things happen to them in their life go well what's my soul's mission i have no idea what my soul's mission is you will find your soul's mission through you going deep within yourself, which is why I created Revitalize Your Life, to assist people to actually deep dive into themselves more, to get out of their own way, to find out what it is. And it's a 45-day journey where each day I'll send you a different awareness, a different deep dive into you, a different part of you to look at. And that's where your answers lie. I hope that assists you. It is $45 in total. It's $45, a dollar a day. So it's an investment that I know I have purposely made that price. And it's only in here that I offer it at this price. I offer it to 10 times that elsewhere. So I highly recommend that you take up that offer because believe me, it's not going to be a dollar a day for much longer because uh, I have to honour where else I sell it for $10 um, a day. So I highly recommend it that you start to do, look into that. Hope that answers your question, Lisa. Um, Marie, nice to see you here, Wendy. I feel that even though my children are grown, I'm still overprotecting them. Wendy, I have to tell you, I think that's what mothers just do. I, you know, I have, as you most of you know, I have a child who's in a different realm and I have children here and a grandchild and a grandchild here and two more grandchildren on their way later this year. And the best thing about it is I think it's just part of being a mother, a part of being a parent. You always will worry about them. But the thing is that it changes though. Once your adult, your children become adults, you become more of a mentor as opposed to an over, like in their face sort of mother. So are you mentoring them or are you actually, um, as you said, you are still overprotective of them, okay? They've got to be able to walk their own path. Would you like someone to be overprotecting you? And that is a really great question for to ask yourselves. Like if if I was, if my mother did to me what I'm about to do to my child, like the way I'm about to talk to them or the way I'm about to look after them, would I have liked that? And that's a great question to always ask yourself. How would I feel if what I'm about to do to someone else was happening to me? You know, we all, I don't know about you, I couldn't wait. I left home at 18 and I just couldn't wait to go and create my own life and do my own things. And sure, I had many lessons along the way and sure, I made a, went down a lot of wrong paths. But in saying that, you've also, it's a great awareness to say, was it a wrong path? Because I learned and I grew and I knew then what I didn't want as opposed to what I thought I wanted. So it's through taking those steps, that's how we learn and grow. We're all spiritual beings having an earthly experience and it's in taking those steps that we get to find out that this is an ideal for us and that's how we grow not only in this realm but also in our spiritual realm. So, yeah. It's not easy. I totally get it. Believe me, I had a son who passed away. So of course you don't you want to make sure that that doesn't happen to the two who are left or your other children who are still here. So it is important for us to also be balancing it out, asking ourselves those many beautiful questions. Um yeah, I get it. I get it with your baby Wendy, it's so hard, you know. My baby was the one who passed away. He was a baby by a minute. So, of course, with his twin brother and his older brother, it's always like, you know, don't do this, that's not good, all this sort of stuff. I get it. Um, it I agreed, it's so right, um, Iggy, 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 is that how you say your name? I hope I got it right. Um, crystals do help. Right, Christina, yep, hello. Okay. Okay, are you a mother, Christine, or is it draining? Because uh, um, you're saying being a mother feels draining to me. Okay, are you a mother 
or are you just um, feeling that you are being drained by the thought of being a mother? And do you know what the funny thing about it is? It's an energy, right? So if you feel you're being drained where you are, but is that because you're not receiving um, the energy flow of love? You know, I can just see my beautiful friend Anna has popped on. Um, and I saw a great post of Anna's from yesterday, this morning. Um, I think I liked it. I didn't have time to comment. And it was the fact that she had spent the day with her son and they went looking for cupcakes and they couldn't find what they wanted, so they created their own. And as she said, I had so much fun in the actual creation on it. So would that have been draining? maybe driving around looking for something and not finding it initially would have been, but it's all about your perspective, right? And I'm not trying to lecture to you, Christine. I'm just trying to assist you to find a way of looking at things differently. If you feel something is draining, deep dive into why it's draining. What? Why aren't you getting the love and the joy from it? Now, continually doing things for other others and not receiving in return is very draining it is it will always be draining you know remember when we all used to fly remember then and of course we all heard that safety announcement in case of emergency please put your own oxygen mask on first before you assist others so if you are a mother who is feeling drained ask yourself the question Am I putting my own oxygen mask on first? Am I looking after me? Do I have my me time? And your me time is so important. It's about making sure that that's where you rest and recuperate. You start to do the things that you love to do. Because if you are just waiting, 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 you will be drained and you will be feeling when is it my time? And you'll be resentful and you'll be angry because we're all here to live and love our lives. And we are the only person we are going to spend our entire life with. There is no one else that we are going to spend 24-7 with every single week in our life. So it's important that we are looking after ourselves. So if you do feel drained, in it, whether you're as a mother or as a friend or as a partner or as an employee or an employer, start to ask yourself the questions. Where's the joy in my life? Where, where am I fulfilling my hopes, dreams and aspirations? Where am I feeling fulfilled? Because if you're not, now is the time because you can't be drained for too long. You will get sick. You will get a disease because it's all about you looking after yourself, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. That's what comes first. Then comes your relationships outside of yourself. So if you are feeling drained, please start to look into how you can enhance your life. And the Revitalize Your Life will greatly assist you. As I said, it's a dollar a day and it will not be that price for much longer. So now's the time for you to deep dive into it because I'm getting a little bit of flack for having it at this price here and at 10 times that somewhere else. So deep dive in now is the time. I hope that works for you. Um... Yeah, I sort of disagree with you, Wendy. Sorry, I'm not going to say that. I'll just put Wendy's comment up here. Uh, being a mother is the hardest job to do. I'm sure children drain us of our energy, which is how they keep us going. I sort of disagree with you there, Wendy, and isn't that great that we can all live in a world where we can agree or disagree um, and not even upset other people? It's just a different perspective. Um because, you know, I, I personally feel that when you know who you are and you know where you're going and you look after yourself and all of your relationships can roll along really nicely. Um, and, you know, our words create our reality. So I would never say being a mother is a hard job because 
then it will make it hard. I find it a very loving job. And at times it can be, you know, something that you always worry about and all that sort of stuff, but it is great. Okay. Um, yes, I would like, I would. Okay, Wendy then said, yes, I would be of like my mother to have been that way to me. And I totally agree. You know, I personally, I, the lot of things I do with my kids is the opposite to the, what, the way that my mother, you know, raised us kids. But then my mother had seven children. I had three that I raised on a daily basis. So it's, you know, it's completely different. And sometimes we look at the way that people do things and say, thank you for teaching me that way, I'm now going to do the opposite because it didn't work for me. And that's why each generation does things differently. Now, if you talk about the millennials, you know, we can all say that we all did the, the completely different to the way that our parents may have, you know, raised baby boomers, did it completely different, and now the millennials are the way they are because, you know, we have done things so much differently that they are very much they expect everything now to be given to them and they don't expect that they have to wait which I sort of think isn't too bad in some ways because then they they're quite happy to go and get it a lot of the times we just sat back and we just you know waited and waited and waited and then got upset when it never happened at least they're willing to go out and get them so that's something that each generation will always improve upon Hi, Anna. As I said, I shared your story. I think I've missed out of, of this. We'll watch another time. Sounds beautiful, just like you. Thank you very much, Anna. Um, no. Okay. I don't know if you have missed most of it. Anyway, it's it's at noon every day, every, every Monday. Great to see you have Chris, uh, three children. Um, okay, Christine, why don't you receive? That's, that's a question like, um, yeah, you then said that it's helped. I hope it has. Um, are, you be the, are you being the example for them to know that it's a two-way street? Because our children learn so much from what we do more so than what we say. So the more that we actually can deep dive into it, the more that you can actually say, by me not looking after myself, by me not setting my boundaries, am I actually being a great example for my children? Because so often we're not, because we're doing these things, expecting our, our children or our partners or our boss to know how we feel, and then we get upset when they don't. But no one can know how you feel unless you tell them how you feel. They might assume that they know, but they're never going to get it, you know, right. That's why in my Beyond Lost process, I always say to people, never ever say, I know how you feel, because you don't. I would never walk up to a, a, a mother who has also lost a child and said, I know how you feel, because I don't. Every relationship is unique. And even your relationships with your children individually will all be unique. And I'm not saying that you love one more than you love the other, but just understand that we are all individuals and every rela relationship is a one-to-one -one relationship. So you will have different things that you do with your children that, you know, they might have different tendencies that they're good at, which may be closer to the things you do. So you may have different relationships with your kids. I'm not saying you love them differently. I'm just saying you may have a different connection with them. And that's cool. Are you taking the time to spend one-to-one -one with all of your children? Are you spending the time saying to them, this is what you would like from them. This is how you'd like them to help you, how to assist you. And then they know because you've told them how you feel and what you'd like. Hope that helps again, Christine. Hi, lovely from Papua New Guinea. Hi, Dee. Welcome from Papua New Guinea. I assume you're on roughly the same time as what we're on. And nice to have you here. I'm in Queensland um, on the Goldie for most people. Um, find time for myself. Without self-care, my family doesn't function. I agree, Rowder. Um, 
have the have the router. Hope that's how I say your name. And setting your boundaries is very important. Thanks for agreeing. Did you find it hard to keep a routine in place? No, but it's about setting the routine and sticking to it. Okay. What I've found with a routine is it takes sixty two days roughly. Um, okay, have fun, Kerry. Um, so it takes roughly 62 days to create a habit and it's about making sure that you stick to it each day so that it does become a habit. Hope that helps, Christine, because when you actually create a diary, okay, create a calendar, a diary, um, so that you actually say this is the routine that we're doing. And then at the end of each night, look at what's planned for tomorrow. Okay, and then set an intention. Set an intention, right, at this time we're doing this and at this time we're doing that and that and that and that. So that then everyone in the house is aware of the routine, therefore you'll stick to the routine. It's when you say you're going to do something and you do something completely different, that's what throws your routine out. But it also throws the expectations of everyone in the house out. Oh, but you said you were going to do this and now we're doing this. So therefore trust. It can then be damaged. Um, your time can then just be wasted. When you actually set your calendar up, you know what you're going to do so you won't waste time. You'll have more energy. But not only that, by the fact that you're actually setting times into your calendar each day, that's how you create your me time. And when you create your me time, that's your energy time, your revitalise your life time. It's, it's when you start to go, right, this is where it's just me. And it may be while the kids are at school or it may be when the kids are still in bed that you choose to get up an hour earlier so that you start to look after you. But everything in your life comes down to what you have scheduled, what you have, your intentions, your purpose, you know, and your intentions. What, why, why do I intend to do this? You know, Oprah Winfrey, she said, that when she first started her show back in the 80s, she her show was a little bit like um, the Jerry Springer show, the first couple of shows. And she said that she had this couple on and during the show the husband revealed to his wife his other family were all bought on show and he had another girlfriend who had children and the whole lot of it. And the wife was devastated, in shock, and the whole of the nation saw her, like, melt down on the camera. And after the show, Oprah said, I am never doing a show like that ever again. Never, ever ask me to do that. That was disgusting. How could we treat another human being the way that we just treated her? She said, I, for every show moving forward, I want you to bring me the storyline and then the intention behind the story. Why do you want the nation and eventually the world to hear this story? What's it about? And Oprah said as soon as she had an intention for every show, it took off. It became the most popular show because the intention behind every show was love and joy and gratitude, all of the good feeling emotions, and it was about making the world a better place. It was about sharing this awareness to help people to connect more to themselves, which would then allow them to connect more to each other. So that's what I'm saying is when you set an intention for each day and for each activity, that's how you will be able to create the life that you live and love each day. And as mothers and as partners and as employees or employers or as friends, neighbours, or just as a citizen of our amazing planet. That's what it's about. It's about assisting people to make their life better. And we do that through being and making sure our life is better. That's how we become the inspiration for others to be who they want to be, to create their life. 
And that was my intention behind Revitalize Your Life. It's about giving you a new perspective, a new awareness, some amazing tools to assist you to put you first. And, you know, each day there's a different awareness that I share with you to help you to be able to create that life where you are saying, all of my relationships are amazing, especially the one with myself. Because so often we forget about us. You know, we say this is draining or this is, is not what I had expected. It's because we haven't taken the time to honour ourselves, to get up in the morning and to look in the mirror and to do what I love to call the old Fonzie salute. You know the Fonzie salute. Hey! Do you do that? That's the way we can do it. I hope this is helping. Let me know if you have any more questions. Um, Christine, thank you so much. Um, I hope you said, you said that that's great advice. It's helping. D. thanks. And, yes, we have some time, same time. That's what I thought, D. Excellent. Um, so any more questions on how we can ensure that each day we are living and loving our life because that's what it's about you know loss we're on that infinite journey that's why my sign is like that behind me that infinite journey of love and loss and it's about realizing that they're equal you know love doesn't have to be up here and loss down here no it's about having them equal it doesn't matter where we are in our lives whether we're in a loss stage or in a love stage our life can still be amazing. And when we have the right tools to know how to assist ourselves to come back to love, right, how to be able to be there for others when they're on that journey so that we don't go into our avoidance tactics. And let's face it, we are all so good at avoiding our life. You know, we've created trillion dollar industries of alcohol, of pharmaceuticals, of eating way too much. It's an avoidance. Social media, Netflix, um, all of this, it's they're just avoidance tactics so that we can look around and just say, well, I'm not as bad as them, but how are you improving your life? Because if you're not continually looking back and going, I'm better than yesterday me. Like yesterday me would have done this, but today me has done this, which is so much better than the way I would have done yesterday or reacted yesterday. And that's what each and every day is about. It's about learning, like at the end of the day, asking yourself some questions. Here's three amazing questions that I'd love to share with you. The first one is, that you get out your calendar, right? Sorry, you get out your diary and you look back at just today. Just look at back at today before you go to bed and ask yourself these questions. The first one is, what did I do today that I will do exactly the same next time? Okay. Then the second question is, what did I do today that I'll do differently next time? And then the third one, what did I learn today about myself, others, or the world? So when you answer those questions each night, you are continually becoming aware of what you will continue to do, what you will change, and a new awareness because every day, there is something new to learn, which is amazing. But it's about us being aware that we've learned something new so that we can go, wow, look at how I'm continually growing. Look at how I am continually being better than yesterday me. Hello, Teresa. Nice to see you here. Hopefully you'll have time to go back and watch the first 45 minutes. But if not, great to see you here. So that's what it is all about, is understanding that life is a journey that will take you from love to loss and back to love again. It's an equal journey. 
We live in a world of duality and we can easily move beyond any kind of loss and create our better everyday life. But it's about knowing how because you've probably noticed we have never, ever really been taught how to move beyond loss. And that's why I do what I do because I've found that many of us look at uh, Kubler-Ross's Five Stages of Grief and actually go, this is how you do loss. That was never her intention when she actually did the research. She did the research on how we do loss, not how to do loss. Now, there's a difference. How we do loss versus how to do loss. And that's the problem. Most people have seen it as this is how you do loss, and it's not. It's not. It's how we've been doing it for centuries and centuries and centuries. There is a better way. And that's what it's all about. And that's why I love coming on live each week to assist people to know that you don't have to suffer and grieve for years and years and years. There is a process. There is a way that you can deep dive into you and deep dive into those feelings. And I know it's painful, but it doesn't have to be painful for very long. It's more painful to avoid them and to go into avoidance and have them pop up every now and then and you shove them down again with more avoidance than it is to deep dive into them and to learn the lessons and then to move on. And that's why I call my process the gift of loss. Okay. So that's it. That is what life's about. So as I said earlier, um, if, you're, if you are having trouble finding out how to do the deep dive into you, I highly recommend the Revitalize Your Life, um, the Revitalize Your Life 45 day, uh, 45 day series where each day I send you a new awareness where you can deep dive into you. Here is the link again if you would like to do that. Or the, another thing that for many people to uh, look at is you can have a download my ebook. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I am in the process of writing my Demystifying Lost book. I'm at the reviews stage now, which I'm really excited about. Hopefully it'll be published later in the year. That is the intention. But if you want to download the Life After Loss ebook, you can actually go there and you can download that as well. Or I will also add that link into here to make it easier for you. I know it's up in the comments earlier, but I'll add that into here as well to make life so much simpler for it. So are there any more comments? Is there anything else that you would like me to share with you today? Um, because we are coming to the end of our show, as always. The, the you know, 50, 60 minutes always go so quickly. But as always, I love to be able to share um, what, you know, how to move beyond loss and how to create it. Thank you, Christine. I do hope that you um, reach out. As always, you can email me, you can PM me, you can do whatever to connect if there's anything that you would like assistance with. Because we've over 40 different kinds of loss in our lives, we are all going to have multiple major losses. And it's not easy. It's not fun. It is It is devastating when you don't know what to do. And we get stuck. We get stuck and we can freeze. I've met people who have been frozen for 20 years because they did not know what to do next. And that's not good. We're all here to live a life. We're the only person we are going to spend our entire life with. So it's really important that we learn how to move beyond loss, any kind of loss, and create our better everyday life. So if there's no more comments, I am going to say thank you for being here. I hope you've enjoyed the show. And I hope that um, I see you here again next week um, Mondays at noon Australian Eastern Standard Time. Bye for now.